Today, I want to talk to you about one of the basic principles of beekeeping, and that is keeping a well-insulated hive. And what I did was I actually come across an old issue of Bee Culture magazine that talks about this very topic that I want to share with you today. Hello everyone, this is Gene with Enjoy Beekeeping. I'm glad to see you guys again. You've probably been wondering, where has he gone? I've been off planet for a little while, guys. It's just been busy, and I do apologize. It's been a while since posting one of my videos, um, but I am still a hardcore beekeeper, and I just want to share with you a little something today I'm working on. It's, if it's wintertime where you are, you're probably getting ready now for springtime, and that is getting your swarm traps ready. Um, I want to show you a little project that I'm working on. These are actually swarm traps that are going to become the permanent house for the bees. And I wanted to spend a little time talking with you today about kind of the, one, of, one of the principles of beekeeping, and that is um, bees like it comfortable just like you and I. A lot of times I get calls or emails from people, do bees want to be in full sun or full shade? Um, do they want to be up high? Do they want to be down low? Do they need a lot of insulation? Do they need any insulation? And bees are just like us in a lot of ways. Uh, think about yourself. If you live in a, uh, a climate where it's hot most of the time, if you get these really brutally hot summers, and we get pretty hot summers where we are. In fact, it's warmer most of the year than it is cool or cold. In fact, right now it's, it's the middle of winter and this is all I need to wear is just a couple of sweatshirts and I'm fine. Our temps usually range around 50 or so. Uh, at night it gets down to about freezing. And that's kind of the norm for my climate zone. But it gets really hot here. So bees, just like us, they wanna be comfortable. So the way that you make your living conditions comfortable is when you build your house or buy a house, you want to make sure it has a lot of insulation in it, right? And it doesn't matter if it's summertime or wintertime. Insulation has a really good effect at keeping your temperature comfortable. It helps you to stay cooler in the summer, right? And it also helps you to stay warmer in the winter. So just imagine, uh, you lived in a house with no insulation whatsoever, and it's a cold, cold winter. And I used to live in a, a part of New York where we had really cold winters. In fact, if you watch the news, a lot of times Buffalo makes the news. And it's because they have these record snowfalls. They have below freezing temperatures, sub-zero, and it's incredibly cold. That's why I had to get out of there. Anyway, if you had a house in Buffalo that didn't have a lot of insulation, your furnace would be running all the time. Why? Well, it'd be trying to keep up making you comfortable, and that furnace wouldn't take a break. It would probably run all winter long just to, just to keep it um, as close as you can to comfortable, and it, it probably really wouldn't be that comfortable. It, probably, it would probably be drafty. Uh, you would probably get sick because you'd be, you know, feeling these cold drafts and bees are the same way. If they can't keep warm in the winter, it's not like they can just go push a button on a thermostat to keep warm, you know, crank it up a few degrees. No, they actually have to consume honey and then use that honey as calories and energy and they create friction. They actually shiver. They don't, they don't sleep during the winter. So they actually cluster. So as that temperature falls below 50 degrees, that colony will cluster up. It's, a, it's like a survival mechanism. It's no different than you and I. If we get cold, we kind of huddle up and we start to shiver. Well, they do that as a colony and they start to shiver. And if you just rub your hands together for a minute, you, you know the effect of you know, that friction, you warm your hands. And that's how they survive the winter. Now, if it's a thin-walled hive, no insulation, especially on the top. And uh, they just have to use that honey and use that energy of that friction to keep warm. Well, they're gonna spend most of their budget, if not all of it, and they could even starve over the winter time just in the effort of keeping their house warm and keeping themselves alive. So I wanna to talk to you a little bit today about this particular project because this is going to be a well-insulated hive, which all my hives are, but I'm actually upping my game because I've been doing some research about the R values of different thicknesses of wood. 
So let me give you a quick example. Here's a piece of three-quarter pine, and a lot of beehives are made from this. Uh, so this, if you look it up on the chart, has an R value of about 0.8 or 0.88. It's not a lot. So if, you're, if you lived in a house with walls this thin, so you're inside, and here's all the cold and snow outside, there's only three quarters of an inch between you and all that cold air. So what can you do? Well, as a homeowner, you're gonna insulate your walls. And bees, when they choose a home for themselves in the wild, they usually will find a tree hollow. And a lot of times those tree hollows have very, very thick walls. They, they've ranged, I've done some cutouts and I've actually done some bee rescues where the power company has come through maybe after a storm and they're cutting up trees that have partially fallen and wouldn't you know it, there's a colony of bees living in there. And every time I go and do one of these uh, rescues, I find that the bees are living in a very comfortable environment because the walls of that tree in general will range from about three inches to about six or nine inches. So when it comes to calculating the R value of a piece of wood, it's real easy to remember. Basically, one inch thick equals an R value of one. That's a pretty good general rule. So here we've got a piece of three quarter pine, so it's not quite an R value of one. So what would a six inch um, thick tree wall have for an R value, probably right around six. So I wanna show you something that I'm doing. I'm, creating, I'm building these um, swarm traps that are also going to become the permanent house for my bees after I take them down out of the tree. And what I'm, what I'm doing, I'm building sleeves for them that are made of the two inch thick polystyrene. And it's gonna go on the outside, and I'll show you one in just a second here. But I wanted to tell you that this is, um, it's, it's called two inch, it's really an inch and a half thick. It's like, kind of like a two by four, you know, it's, it's a two, but it's really one, one and a half inches thick. So it's one and a half inches thick, but it has an R value of 7.5. And what's really important to remember, just like at your house, if you were to insulate your house, most houses are built with either a two by four or two by six wall stud. And you can only get so much R value insulation in that space. Most of the time it's gonna be about 10 to 15 as an R value. And that's a really well insulated wall, by the way. But where does most of your heat loss occur? Well, 75% of all your heat loss goes up out the roof. So it'll go through your ceiling and out the roof. And so when you insulate a beehive, if you only insulated one part of your beehive, you should have a well-insulated roof. Because think about a tree for just a second. You've got an average R value of maybe seven to eight or you know however thick the tree is. It's gonna be decent. Um, it's not gonna be like a piece of three-quarter pine at all. But how much, how many inches of tree are above those bees in most cases? Well, it can vary, but it's usually several feet What's the R value of several feet of wood? We don't even know. Um, it's, it's off the charts. And the same thing with below that uh, tree hollow, because a lot of times bees will find a spot maybe uh, 20 or 30 feet up, and so the tree is solid below and it's solid above, and they just happen to find a cavity inside that tree. So they are well insulated. In fact, they have what's called a thermal vault. And if you have the book, Keeping Bees with a Smile, you can read about that thermal vault effect that the bees like. They actually can capture the heat inside the hollow of that tree. And typically, there's only one way in or out of that tree hollow. And they control that. And it's usually towards the bottom. And then they build their nest up high, vertically. So I want to show you something here that I'm doing. So this is going to be the swarm trap. And I'm using... Lazutin style frames. So let me just pull one out. This is one of the frames that I'm using to bait my swarm trap with. And just a real quick tip, 
I don't like to use a full sheet of foundation. This is wax foundation. It's a starter strip and I've got a little bit of fishing line here. I don't know if you can see it or not. Um, I want the bees to build the comb the way they want to build it and I give them a good starting guide so it's nice and straight. But if you use a full sheet of wax inside of your frames and you load it up in here, when the scout bees come to take the measurements that they do to determine whether this is a good spot or not to make their house, those wax sheets can actually throw them off and they might say, you know, there's really not enough room in here when the reality is there's plenty of room. The bees are looking for a, about a 10 gallon volume. This has five Lazutin style frames in it, which is kind of like a double deep. So it's the equivalent of a 10 frame Langstroth deep. So that's what we're doing. So we only have five, so it's a narrow cavity and I keep my frames numbered one through five Bees don't like when you go in and do an inspection and pull out a frame from the middle and stick it on the end. They actually build their house with a purpose. So keep that in mind too. And I want to show you the sleeve that I was talking about. So let me, let me set this one down and I'm going to go grab the one with the sleeve on it. Here we go. Okay, so here's the one that I have the sleeve on. And I am going to paint this, by the way. So here, here's my entrance. And I'm gonna use, for my climate zone, we have a horrible problem with hive beetles. So I am going to use the Guardian Hive Beetle Entrance Trap. It's like a baffle. It makes it really hard for the hive beetles to find a way in to the hive. So this is one of the Guardian Hive Beetle Entrance Traps. It's, it's more like a baffle. And the reason why I like these so much uh, there's two reasons. Number one, the, the obvious is the hive beetles. Uh, they're a real problem here in the south. And all I had to do was cut a 3 8 inch slot, a 3 8 slot right here. And this screws on. And I had to put a little bit of a landing board just because the, the beetle baffle won't work unless you have a level piece of landing board right here. So uh, this is how I'll screw it on. And when the beetles land, they, if they land here, they'll go down. That's what beetles always do. Whenever they land, they go down because they're trying to get into wherever it is they're going. So if they land here, they'll go down and then they'll be walking around on this little landing board. If they land here on top, they'll crawl underneath and they'll get stuck in here. So it really drives them crazy. They can't figure out how to get in here. The other reason why I like these so much is because with this opening, it's literally about... Um, uh, just a little bit over a quarter inch, not quite three-eighths. We get these really large hornets here in Georgia. Maybe you get them where you live too. You've probably heard of those murder hornets. Well, they can't get in here. And that's why I like this too. So it's got a two-fold purpose. Now, um, the thing about hive beetles, if you got them where you live, do everything you can to make sure there's only one way in or out for any critter that, that's trying to get in here. Because the bees will guard the entrance the primary entrance, but if you have a big hole or if you have got a piece of knot of, uh, from a piece of wood that falls out and then other bees can get in to rob or hive beetles can start to invade, your bees have to dedicate part of their workforce simply to capturing and transporting hive beetles out of the hive. And they've only got just so many days of spring to make the nectar that they're going to, or to get the nectar that they need to make honey. And they, they don't really want to spend all their time chasing hive beetles out, or sometimes what they'll do is they'll propolize them into a corner somewhere. But it's really frustrating for the bees if hive beetles can continually come into the hive because they poop all over the place and they'll slime it. They have their little maggot larvas all over and the bees will abscond. So hive beetles have been my number one problem where I live in my climate zone. So I'm just north of Atlanta, kind of between the mountains and the city. And hive beetles here are, are a pain in the butt and I do everything I can. So when I build these hives, I seal them. Uh, I make sure all my joints are nice and tight. And if they're not, I always inspect them. I take a little bit of clear silicone and I just run a bead on there. If I don't, the bees will probably propolize it anyway but I want to make sure that it's as tight as I can make it and if one of those seals starts to give, the breeze will put the propolis in there and, and make it just right so that nobody gets in or out. 
um, except for the bees through the main entrance. So here is one of the sleeves that I made. And all I did was I just taped it together with some heavy duty Gorilla Tape. I'm gonna put a coat of paint on it, but let me just remove this once for you so you can see. Um, real quick before I pull this off, I left the entrance area to be bare wood. So this little section here, it's only about four or five inches, is, is going to get the full exposure of the cold, which is not a big deal when you consider that we're only talking a couple inches here. This is, and remember, heat's going up, so if they're gonna lose heat, it's, it's probably gonna go up, not out the front door. It's not gonna go down and out. It's gonna go up, or at least attempt to. So let me pull this off, because once I get this swarm trap out of the tree, I'll put the sleeve on then. I'm not gonna hang it up in the tree with the sleeve on now, but this is the sleeve right here. So there it is, not a big deal. All I did was just take the measurements and uh, I made it just a tiny bit bigger, like about an eighth of an inch bigger, just so it would slip back on when I wanna put it back on. So I'll hang my swarm trap in a tree, and I always got my lucky trees. Once you catch bees in a tree, always remember where that tree was and hang a swarm trap there every year. Nine out of 10 times, you're gonna catch one there year after year after year. So I call them my lucky bee trees. I always hang them up in the same spot every year. Once I bag one, I always go back there again. So keep a ledger if you do a lot of this. And the ratio, if you're doing swarm trapping, it's about 50-50. If you hang up 10, you'll probably catch five. So that's a really good year. If you catch more, well, those are bonuses for you. So enjoy those bonuses. Uh, so here's the sleeve. And so after I set this on the hive stand where I want it, all I have to do then is take my sleeve and drop it on and get behind it here and slide it down. And there it goes. That's not so hard. You, you, you don't want it to be too loosey-goosey so that you, you're getting air in between. But I want to show you the top. Now, what, what am I going to do in order to prevent heat loss through the roof? That's where most of the heat loss is going to occur. So this is a five-frame Lazutin style, which is basically a Langstroth frame, only deeper, okay? So for those of you that are hearing all these, we've got Layens frames, we've got Lazutin frames, we've got Langstroth frames. They all serve the one purpose of giving the beekeeper something to pull out and inspect the bees with, and to have it manageable and, and inspectable, and it's legal. Um, but how am I gonna keep the heat from escaping the roof? Because I've already got the walls, done with a sleeve. And by the way, I do intend on keeping the sleeve on all year round. Summer, winter, spring, fall, you name it. It's gonna be on there all the time. And I'm also going to keep on what I'm gonna call a thermal hat. I don't know, if you guys have a more creative thing to call it, that's fine. But all I have to do is take a medium five frame super and I wanna fill it with insulation. And I've got all kinds of choices. So. If I wanted to use a lot of this foam, I can just put three or four layers of this foam. I can just cut it the same size. What you may opt to do um, is something that I like to do. I like to use lamb's wool. And I've got some here. I just so happen to have a, uh, a farmer not too far away um, that I can get lamb's wool from. And so he has some really nice uh, sheep at his farm that he shears every year. And Lamb's wool, I looked it up, you can Google this for yourself if you want to. Two inches of lamb's wool has the same R value as one of these two inch pieces of polystyrene. So what I intend to do is put this super over top of my uh, bees for the winter time and the summer. I, I'll probably have a hat on these guys year round. Spring, summer, winter, or fall, you don't want those rapid uh, radical temperature swings. You want everything to be stable. The more stable your climate is inside the house, well, your energy bills are less, and the bees, same thing, they're not gonna expend all their energy, they're not going to consume all their honey, just trying to keep things stable, and then you won't have to run the risk of getting sick. Bees get sick too. They don't like to be cold, 
wet, drafty. They don't like any of that. So you want to make sure that if you're only going to insulate one part of your beehive, give them a really good insulated top. So, so what I do is I use an entire super. I'll fill it with lamb's wool. This super, let me just see how thick it is or how tall it is. It's about seven inches. So if I put uh, two, four, six, and then uh, if I get seven and a half, I'm getting, I'm, I'm pushing 25 R value. That's pretty good. Um, so I'll be able to keep the climate controlled for the bees just by putting that thermal hat or box on top. And I'm gonna show you, I got one other thing. So I've got this too, this goes with it. So I load this up with the lamb's wool and then I have another piece of polystyrene that's just a little bit wider than the polystyrene sleeve that I made here so that way it sits with a uh, lip so that if there's any rain the water won't go in but it'll drip away onto the sides. So this will just fit over the top like this and let me show you that lip real close. Let me just come in with it. Okay you can see here what I'm talking about. You can see that lip. See how it hangs off? and there too. So admittedly, it's really not that pretty. It's kind of ugly. You know, it's just a big goofy looking box with insulation. But I'll tell you what, you do this for your bees and they're going to love you for it. So not only are you going to enjoy beekeeping because your bees are going to winter incredibly well. If they don't have to spend all that honey energy in keeping warm, uh, they're going to come out in early spring ready to go. Uh, they won't be subject to those late spring freezes that you sometimes get. I don't know, it, do, it doesn't seem to matter where you live, whether you live in the south or whether you live up north. A lot of times spring will set in and you have got all these nice beautiful warm days and all of a sudden you'll get this cold snap. And when that happens to a beehive that's not well insulated, there's a lot of brood loss. And then you can get brood disease after that. You can get all kinds of things like nosema, that's one of them. So the bees, by keeping them warm and snug year round, you're gonna be doing your bees, you're, you're gonna be doing your bees a huge favor. They're gonna be more comfortable. They're not gonna be subject to those rapid temperature extremes. And um, just to go back to one of the things I was talking about earlier where a lot of times where people will ask me, should I put them in the sun? Should I put them in the shade? Where I live, uh, I, we do get those hot summers. And so what I do is I favor the shade more than the sun. So they'll get a little bit of sun and shade, but predominantly I'll put them in a spot where by the time the sun gets up high and it starts to get hot out during the day, they're in full shade. So I might give them a little morning sun to wake them up and get them going. But after that, they're not gonna sit in full sun and bake all day long. Now, if you live in a climate up north where it's cold most of the time, you'll probably want to favor the sun more than the shade. Okay, so that, that probably makes sense. So just think of yourself. So if you're living in the north climate, it's a little bit of a chilly day. Where do you usually stand? You usually stand in the sun, right? You, that sun just helps warm up. And then if you're living in the south and you're down here visiting me on the bee farm and it's one of those 98 degrees, where are you going to stand? Probably underneath the shade tree, right? Your bees are the same way. So treat your bees with love just like you would want to be loved. Give them a nice warm cozy house and they'll thank you for it. After keeping bees for about 15 years, it's funny how um, you learn things uh, as you go. And the cool thing about keeping bees is you're always learning. If you don't learn something new in beekeeping, you're probably not paying attention. And um, one of the things that I've noticed about myself as a beekeeper is I'm really not too concerned about how much honey I get from my bees. I'm more concerned with do they have enough honey? So if they do, and I see there's extra, well guess, guess who's going to come get a frame? I am. I'm going to take a frame of honey, and that's coming right in the house. And if I got enough of them, I'm going to run the extractor, and I'm going to get buckets of honey. And that's always fun. But my primary concern about the bees is I want them to live in a way that is as natural as possible. And so a nice insulated home 
And also, too, I really try to do minimal interference with their day-to-day -day routine. All I'm doing is I want to provide them with a place to live that's as close as they could get if they were to go out shopping in the forest and find the perfect tree hollow. I want to create that same environment for them here. One thing I didn't show you was um, the inside of this particular beehive. Let me show you that real quick. You've already seen the sleeve. Oh, okay, I forgot. Now the, the inside of this beehive, I've got a solid bottom on this one. And let me just show this to you. I'll take the sleeve off so you can see better. Okay, so here's, here's the entrance. And let me just see if this is the one. Yes, it is. Okay, I've got, let me just measure. So where the bees are gonna come in, I've got about two and a half inches of empty space below the frames. And I'm gonna fill that with peat moss. I, I sometimes get emails about some of my uh, horizontal hives where I've made them three to four inches deeper than the bottom of the frame and I've filled it with peat moss. And I always get asked, you know, how's that working out? Is, is it helping? And the answer is yes and I'm still observing all the benefits. I don't know if I've seen all the benefits that there are to it yet. What I will tell you is when I did a lot of my tree rescuing, uh, when, I do a lot of my, when I do a lot of my bee tree rescues, the one thing that I always seem to notice, remember we talked about the heat vault that's up at the top? Well, that moisture will come down. The moisture will always look for the coldest surface to cling to. So that's why you want to have that roof real warm. Remember we were talking about most of the heat loss is through the roof. So if you've got a thin roof, all that moisture will condensate right above the bees and then drip right on them on a cold day and that's what will kill your bees. So what you want to do is you want for the cold wet air to not condense right above their heads. So at the bottom and the sidewalls, that's where there's less insulation. So that cold air should move to the outside edges and go down. And so the peat moss acts as a wick. Um, it's cooler down at the bottom. That's where the entrance is. So the cold air, so it could even be zero degrees outside, that zero degree air is going to be coming into the entrance, but it's not going to infiltrate the entire hive. It's going to allow for enough air exchange so that they got good breathable air. They don't get overloaded with CO2. It will be a higher level, but it's not going to be fatal. And they should get enough air exchange and that peat moss is going to wick up some of that moisture. And also too, it's going to create an environment that is similar to what bees will find in a tree hollow. Because most of the time below the bee colony, there's all kinds of soft, moist, uh, partially rotted wood, all kinds of centipedes and, and pill bugs and roaches, all living like one big happy family in that tree. And that's about you know six or eight inches, sometimes even a foot below the, the bottom of the combs. And there's a whole ecosystem living in there. So I'm trying to get as close as I can to that. If I really wanted to go full on with this, I probably should have about a one foot dead space below the entrance of the hive and I should just fill it with um, uh, peat moss and that'll wick up moisture and it'll probably create a new ecosystem inside that hive. That's something I'm still working on and that's going to be um, future videos and, and research. I'm more of a bee scientist now than I am um, I guess a I don't know a honey producer. Uh, I'm not so uh, concerned about how much honey I get as I am on creating the environment that the bees want to live in and uh, trying to to do as much as I can uh, to make this just exactly the way they want it. So I showed you the one with the solid bottom. I've got one other one I'm going to show you. It has a screen bottom. Okay, so here's one. Almost the same exact dimensions as the other one and it also uses Lazutin frames, so it's like a double deep Langstroth. I've still got to put my uh, landing board entrance and my hive beetle entrance baffle right here, but this one here I've got about 
three, maybe three and a half inches of dead space, but if you spin it around back, you can see here I've got a corrugated plastic slide out tray because I've got a screen bottom board inside. So I just took some uh, corrugated cardboard signs. So here's the tray. Fits in there pretty good. I do have a piece of wood that I'm going to put right here that's going to fit nice and tight. That's the key. I don't want hive beetles to be able to get in here. So yes, I did go with a screen bottom board on this one. Oh, let me show you this too real quick. So underneath, underneath it's, it's a solid bottom, but it's recessed. It's recessed enough that I could put a piece of two inch foam insulation board right here under the floor if I want to. So I'll probably do it since I made it that way. So it'll be insulated a little bit at the bottom. And on my trays, I'll show you these. So these trays slide out just like that. And a lot of times people will use uh, mineral oil in these trays and that does work. So if, if beetles or mites fall in, it does drown them. The problem that I've found with using mineral oil is that it can go rancid. So if, if enough hive beetles fall into it, it'll start to stink. But what I like to use instead is either one of two things. One is diatomaceous earth, and it doesn't matter if it's food grade or if it's just uh, you know something that you buy at the feed store in a big 50 pound bag. In fact, that's what I did when I first started keeping bees. 15 years ago, I bought a 50 pound bag. I still have like 40 pounds of it left. So if you want some and you're nearby, come get some, I got plenty. The other thing that I like to use is lime dust. And it's, it's a special lime dust. It's not the gardener's lime that you use to enrich soil. It's the same kind of powder, white chalky powder that they use to line baseball fields with. So that's the lime dust. So all that does is when beetles or mites fall into it, they dry out. They get stuck in it. They have a real hard time getting traction. Kills them just as effective as the mineral oil, but it doesn't have that nasty smell. So there's a little tip for you. If you're using screen bottom boards with the little slide out trays, you might want to try diatomaceous earth or the lime dust. My goal is to shoot some more videos. I'm so sorry that it's been so long since my last video. Um, with, uh, with COVID finally being over, I got back to work with my real job and I've been super, super busy, but fear not, um, I have not given up beekeeping. I thoroughly love keeping bees and I think you will too. So if you're thinking about this as a hobby, um, I encourage you to study now during the cold months, if it's winter time where you are, uh, study now on how to keep bees and by spring you'll be ready to start catching swarms. So check out some of the other videos that I've got on my channel because that's what I'm getting ready to do next. These are going to be swarm traps that are going up in the trees and then they're coming back down uh, to their permanent spot and I'm going to set them up on a rail. I'm going to put these nice cozy sleeves on them and these little uh, bee hats or whatever you want to call them. I can't think of a better name right now, but they're going to go on. We're going to keep things nice and snug and easy for them to regulate their temperatures in and out. And we're also going to keep those hive beetles out too. So that's all I've got for this video, friends. It's so good to be back and to see you folks again. Thanks for watching. I do appreciate it so much. And I really do want to shoot more videos. So I'm going to really try hard to manage my time in such a way that I can put out more content because I really do enjoy this. And if it helps you in some way, uh, get started and get a grasp on what it what it means to be a, a, a natural backyard beekeeper. I want to help you in that journey because natural beekeeping and commercial beekeeping are two different worlds altogether. And I see so many backyard beekeepers trying to copy what commercial beekeepers are doing and you don't want to do that. You want to do what's best for your bees. And just like a lot of modern industrial agriculture, it's all profit driven. It's not necessarily what's best for the animal. It's what's going to be best for the bank account. So we put the bees first with enjoy beekeeping. So until next time, friends, enjoy beekeeping. We'll see you at the next video. So you probably noticed that the hives I'm showing you today are vertical style. So I have a lot of videos that feature my lands hives, which I thoroughly love. So you're probably wondering, well, why is he going vertical when he was so crazy about horizontal? 
They both work as long as you use the same principle of a well-insulated hive. That's what really uh, helps my bees get through the winter is the thick walled hives. But when I realized that for every inch of thickness of wood, it was the equivalent of one R, and most tree cavities have about a seven and a half to, you know, greater, I wanted to get as close as I could to that. And this year something happened to me, I didn't tell you about it earlier, but I actually lifted up one of my Lance hives and it was empty, it had no bees in it or anything. If you guys picked up one of these things, they are not light. They're made with dimensional lumber, the two inch thick stuff. I picked one up and I did get hurt. So um, I had to be careful. I was worried I was gonna need surgery. It doesn't look like I'm gonna need surgery and it's been like six or seven months or whatever. I think it's been eight months now. Um, so I started to think to myself, man, maybe I should uh, build some lighter beehives. And so I've built some double wall insulated lands, and I love those by the way. And so I'm looking for ways to build lighter beekeeping equipment. So whether it's vertical or horizontal, if I can pick it up and carry it without giving myself a hernia, I'm kind of interested in that. That's what I'm trying to do. So I love the concept of just pulling out one frame at a time, which is great when you're harvesting honey, you just got to grab a frame and there you go. You can put it into a, a carrying box on a wagon. You don't have to lift up an entire super. And that's another reason why I like the five frame configuration because I can just put a five frame medium uh, honey super over top of this, uh, this, this beehive that I've built and it's not going to be that heavy. It's going to be about 35, 40 pounds maybe. I can still handle that. So I just don't want to get hurt anymore. That was a close call and uh, I really wasn't looking forward to surgery. Uh, it was just one of those things where we were just kind of wait and see, am I going to feel better in a couple days? It really felt like a hernia. I called my buddy. Uh, up in New York and I, he's had a couple hernias. I said, hey, I got this weird feeling in my stomach. Uh, is this what a hernia feels like? He goes, yeah, it kind of sounds like it does. So what I actually did though, I have a, an Amish doctor that I see up in New York and um, he, uh, I talked to him for a little while and he has, he's a pretty clever guy. He says, I've got something I want you to try and uh, it's an herbal supplement that I give to pregnant women. I give it to pregnant women because their stomach wall, as the baby's growing, starts to stretch. And so this will strengthen it if you've just got like a micro tear or if you've just maybe strained those muscles in your abdominal wall. If that's all it is, it'll fix it. And sure enough, it fixed it. Well, we sure did cover a lot of information in that video. And you probably have some questions now regarding ventilation. And so the next video that I do, I'm going to talk specifically about ventilation. I've got so many things that I want to share with you. So stay tuned, friends. I'm going to try and keep on top of these videos for you. And until the next one, enjoy beekeeping. <laughs>